back to my channel. It's Samantha here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope you all are doing really well. If you enjoy history, The Sims 4, or really in-depth storytelling, I highly suggest that you hit that subscribe button and join our Love Sim family. We have a lot of fun here. I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody for all of the love and support on the very first episode of Vampires Through Time. Uh, we were really excited to see it do so well and me and Jamie are just super excited to continue to bring you this story. So once again, a huge shout out to Jamie for co-writing this with me and I will have his channel linked in the description below. Uh, today we are going to be in a brand new area, in a brand new time, and as you can see, Kenji has arrived in London. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get in to part two. So as you can see, we are currently in a beautiful village uh, full of beautiful homes. It's a quiet, loving community that has really helped each other grow. Very tight-knit community in London, England. The year is 1199. We're at the turn of the century and we are in the High Middle Ages. The High Middle Ages was a time of transition for the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages and a lot was going on. Um, and today our focus is going to be on the Pierce family. So in the last episode, a lot of you saw a, a mysterious face and you weren't really sure who he was. So I'm really excited. Today we're going to be bringing you Isaac's story. So this here is Isaac Pierce. Isaac is the youngest son of the Pierce family and he is the son of Osbert Pierce. Osbert lives here with his loving wife, Ida who is really tense right now because they had a fire. Uh, I just realized that my sim should just not barbecue like ever. <laughs> She's super tense. Uh, but this is Ida. They have two children together, their eldest son, William Pierce. And this here is their family, um, their family home that they share together in London. Now, the Pierce family actually raises and trains horses. Back in the Middle Ages, horses were basically the main form of transportation, horse and carriage. Horses were used on farms. They were used for all forms of working and they were very important. And so their family actually breeds and trains horses for the community and they have done this for quite a few years now. Uh, the father is the second generation to be involved in this business on this property. Now, obviously we all know by now that our story primarily focuses on this young man here. So as I said before, this is Isaac Pierce. Isaac is a very young adult. He is just newly 18 years old and he is currently an apprentice as a blacksmith. Mine ore and stoke the bellows for the blacksmith to do their job, follow orders, and try to stay out of the way. <laughs> because his family business revolves around horses, he thought it would be really great to become an apprentice in blacksmith so he could help, you know, make the horseshoes, make tools for the property, and also as a side thing, he's really interested in sword fighting and really interested in general um, in crafting things. He really likes working with his hands. He also always has. Whereas his older brother is more of the finance guy. He's the one that kind of keeps the family together, you know, keeps everybody in line and following the rules and um, kind of makes sure that the purse strings are taken care of. So these two brothers are very different in what their goals are in life. Uh, like I said, William definitely is more of the uh, maybe a little stuck up, a little bit, you know, like I'm the eldest type of uh, personality. Ida and Osbert are starting to get up there in age. And back in the middle age, uh, lifespans were a lot shorter than they are currently today. So even though they aren't super old for their time, they are really starting to get up there in age um, with the way healthcare was. <laughs> so they are really proud and trying their best to get their sons ready to take over the family farm. 
So their main focus right now is trying to find a bride for this handsome man, William, to marry. That way they can make sure that the family home is cared for. Now, usually it would work like the that the eldest son would be the one to inherit the businesses, inherit the properties, um, and usually we're the first ones to uh, get married. So that's kind of what the family's focus has been so far. Now, these two brothers are not very close. Like I said, they do have um, a lot of differences in opinions. William is very stern and wants his brother to fall in line, whereas Isaac is more of the type of young man who uh, feels like it's very important to stand up for what he believes, fight for what is right, and he can sometimes be a little bit vocal about it and how he goes about it. So every morning, Isaac runs to work to the blacksmiths because it is a small community, a small town, a small village, if you will. He is able to walk over to work and um, start his shift every day as a blacksmith. Now, Isaac is kind of the type of guy, you know, he's not really big. He's not super strong like his brother. Um, and sometimes that really weighs on him because he really has a strong... Uh, desire to protect and you know take care of his family and the people he cares for uh, so sometimes he can be really hard on himself uh, for you know the fact that you know he's really vocal and really like scrappy and like really likes to stick up and and maybe sometimes say things he shouldn't like his filter's not great yet <laughs> um but he doesn't necessarily have the um ability to back himself yet and so him being a blacksmith has really helped him find his own and really helped him to develop not only his love of making things and crafting things but also it just makes him feel like he's um doing his purpose you know helping to provide with his family Family. Now Isaac's traits as you can see here is he is a perfectionist so he really wants to make the perfect everything and he's so hard on himself like he strives for perfection he's constantly trying to be better than anybody else and better than himself he's pushing his own limits all the time and always trying to achieve more uh, so he definitely is a perfectionist but he is proper he's still very respectful to people dressing people properly saying sir and ma'am and being respectful um, but he just has you know sometimes those moments where like he can't quite handle Handle things properly like he sometimes maybe um, processes things differently but he is proper he comes from a really good family that has taught him respect and he is good so he is a genuinely good guy and he always always has good intentions his heart is almost always in the right place when he does the things that he does he never does things for selfish reasons he's always doing it for the better of his family or for the people he cares about or for his village whatever the purpose may be so this is where Isaac works. It is the blacksmith's home and his shop, which is located in the center of the town square. And he has been an apprentice for the blacksmith for a few years now. And he's really starting to master his technique. So this here is James Finney. James is the local blacksmith. This is the guy, this is the man that Isaac has been training under for so many years now. And if you're interested I do have the mod in the description below for the blacksmith career if you're doing your own medieval gameplay however it is normally a rabbit hole style job and then you have tasks that you have to check off um, I just downloaded a home to look like the blacksmith's home just to make it feel a little bit more real I also downloaded a mod called Medieval Interactions. I also have that linked below. So when you click on another sim, it shows up as a tab here and I love it. So it shows gossip about the litigary this morning, discuss the nobles, discuss the black death. And uh, it's really cool. Did you hear who the new Pope was? Discuss what's new around the kingdom. 
So while Isaac is doing his regular job like he always does, him and James start to have a conversation about the kingdom and what is going on, starting to talk about the new leadership. Now in the high middle ages, the Norman conquest was happening. It was about a 20 year period, the conquest itself. And during this time, new the new earls or new nobility started to take over and the way that the government, the tax system, everything, the structure of it and how it worked. James is discussing with Isaac about the new nobilities and the Norman conquest and how uh, it is affecting their community. They're starting to change the tax system. They're trying, they're starting to change how everything is done and it's going to start affecting our businesses. Basically during, during the Norman conquest, um, they adopted a feudal system which is basically a society that is organized by political and military leadership. So basically what would happen is uh, people would take an uh, would swear an oath of allegiance to the um, to the nobility, to the king, the queen, and etc. And in return, they would gain land. And then the landowners would then rent that land to the poor, the peasants, if you will. So that would be Isaac's class and the blacksmith's class. Like maybe, you know, a little bit in there. With the um, way uh, that the system works, a lot of people would lose their land that originally owned land and they would have to work for free in order to keep their property. So Isaac's like, well, if that affects you, that's gonna affect my family too, you know? And so he's starting to get really worried. They have so many customers today. People just keep rolling up. Uh, but anyways, Isaac is really worried because, you know, if the blacksmith is worried about his home, like Isaac's family, the Pierce family home is way more at risk than theirs. Now, there's also risk of the taxes getting higher and they're gonna just slowly become you know worse off than they already were you know but he is easily distracted by the blacksmith's daughter now this lovely lady here who has the same hair as me i wore this wig in honor of lucia this is lucia Binney, and she is actually the daughter oh look he can recite a love poem he is, she is the daughter of the blacksmith and also the one and only true love of Isaac. Oh, he's reciting love poetry. Thou art so beautiful, Lucia. Even though he's really worried, I do have to say whenever he um, is around Lucia, he worries less, his heart is filled with joy. Now, Lucia is actually also an extremely talented blacksmith. Her mother passed away a long time ago and her father has basically raised her alone. And Lucia has basically, she's more of a tomboy. You know, she's really taken on the, um, she's really taken on her father's trade. Back then, women uh, really didn't have a lot of rights. They weren't really able to do traditional, like nowadays I could go be an engineer, I can do whatever I want. Back then, women didn't have those freedoms. Um, and a lot of times they weren't respected for their, for their um, interests. So unfortunately, sometimes they didn't have as much support. Um, but Isaac knows and sees her talent, sees her passion for creating and making things, and he really admires that about her, and he loves that they share a passion together. The only downside about this wonderful budding romance is the fact that his family um, is waiting for his oldest brother to be married off. He doesn't own anything. He doesn't. He's not the heir of any land. He has nothing to offer um, her hand in marriage. And he knows that she would be better off marrying someone else because he really doesn't have that to give to her right now. And so Lucia though, she doesn't really care. She's like, you could come live with my dad and I. Like you don't have to wait for your brother to get married. I don't understand why we're always having to put everyone else before us. And he's like, I know, but like, I can't provide a life for you. And she's like, my dad's taught you how to be a blacksmith. You could come work for him full time and you could take over my family business and we could do it together. And Isaac's like, I know Lucia, but 
I want to be able to give you more. I want to be able to provide for you. And she's like, I don't care if we're poor Isaac and living in a box. As long as we're together, I'd much rather be with a man who genuinely loves me. And he's like, I know, but I have to respect my family's wishes right now. Once my brother gets married, we can figure it out. And she's like, whatever, Isaac, I'm not gonna wait around forever. She knows that he has a good heart and good intentions, but sometimes Isaac uh, will always put others before his own happiness. And in this case, he's doing just that. He's basically telling her, you know, I've gotta think of my family first. I gotta make sure that everybody's happy. You know, I gotta make sure that my brother is taken care of, you know, all of that kind of stuff before you know these two can really pursue their life um you look like you're having a good time isaac oh my god these two are so in love <gasps> oh my gosh this is from the the mod i did love you i loved you and i probably still do and for a while the feeling may remain but let my love no longer trouble you i do not wish to cause you any pain i loved you and the hopelessness i knew the jealousy, the shyness, though in vain, made up a love so tender and so true. Oh my god. As may God grant you to be loved again. What the heck? Why is that so cute? That's from the mod. Ah, I just love this. Oh, look at all these little things. Is it true, though? If the baker's wife has an affair with the priest, this will cause a huge scandal. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this mod is awesome. So after a really long day of working at the blacksmith, I have Isaac here, Osbert, and William, and the men have arrived at the pub. And what do you know? Vlad is the bartender. <laughs> the guy, so the guys have arrived here. They're going to get some drinks, and um, Isaac is going to fill in his family about the news in the kingdom that he learned from his boss it's about you know the new rulership and how everything's going to be changing so his brother's gonna say to him you know like you don't really have anything to worry about we're gonna be fine you know we're a prominent family we've made an impact you know we really provide a lot of important services to the nobles and i just don't think that they're gonna you know push this on us and Isaac's like, no, you don't understand. They're bringing people in to enforce. Like, they're going to make us pledge an oath and an allegiance. And we're going to have to uh, provide services for free in order to keep our land. We're not going to be paid for our services anymore. And his brother is like, I don't think that's the case. I think it's going to be okay. And, you know, so every the, the men are kind of like arguing about like the circumstances. And, you know, their father is getting older. He's a lot more of a mild you know, soft-spoken man, so he really doesn't have too much of an opinion on the situation. Uh, William's just gonna say to Isaac, like, listen, it's gonna be fine, I really don't need you getting in my way with things, you know, just let me handle it, I know how to deal with this, I'm the oldest, I'm gonna deal with it. So Isaac's like, fine, oh, whatever, I still think that you're wrong. And he's like, well, you can think I'm wrong, but you don't have a say, I'm the head of this family and you have to do what I say. And Isaac's like, I think there's a storm brewing, bro. Like, we really need to be ahead of this. So, unfortunately, the two men um, are having a really hard time agreeing, agreeing on the situation. And once again, Isaac is being treated like the little brother that doesn't have a say and, you know, doesn't really add value to the situation. Which really angers him because he really does just love his family and want to be there for his family. So while they're at the pub, his brother has decided, you know, to move past it. Isaac's like, okay, I'll drop this, the conversation. So Kenji has arrived at the pub to enforce. He's been going through the town, going to all of the businesses, telling them that they are going to start paying the kingdom and that they are going to be responsible for serving the kingdom and providing services for free and um, basically just roughing up everybody in the community. Um, since he has fled Japan, he's basically trying to escape his, his, his past in Japan. So uh, Kenji has come across their father, Osbert, and he's gonna say, you know, your family is just as responsible for this situation and you know, you will be expected to provide free services to the kingdom also. And uh, he's basically just giving everybody a hard time. And instead of William, who is distracted, trying to find a wife, as always, talking up every girl he sees, Isaac is like, well, if he's not going to deal with the situation, I'm going to. So 
Um, Isaac is going to introduce himself to Kenji and he's going to say, what is your problem? Why do you think you can just come into our land, come to our towns and destroy our businesses, our family businesses that we have built up ourselves? And Kenji's just going to say to him, like, you really don't understand what's going on here. And I would just really suggest that you don't get involved, kid. Like, I don't have the temperament to deal with people like you and isaac's like listen i care about my family and my family deserves the best and i don't understand why you people think that you can just come here and take away all of our hard work and kenji's like i don't think i can take away all your hard work i can i know i can you have no chance up against me so i highly suggest that you just back off that way you don't get yourself hurt and Isaac's gonna be like, you might think that you're tough, but you don't know my community. You don't know my people. We band together and we stick together in hard times. You and your earls and bishops that you serve are gonna have a hard time dealing with us. Kenji's like, we'll see. So Isaac is like, really doesn't like Kenji. He feels like this Kenji guy's just come into town acting like he knows everything, acting really tough. And he just thinks like, how can you be so disrespectful to the people who serve, you know, who built this town? Like you didn't do that. So he's just gonna shove him and he's getting really at it, you know, giving him a lot of attitude. Kenji's like, seriously, man, you don't wanna mess with me. I don't have the time or the patience and you really need to back off because I am exercising every bit of strength that I have not to cause you problems and Isaac is like what is this guy why is he acting like he's like the scariest guy on earth like he obviously doesn't know that Kenji is a vampire and so he just thinks he's doing the best that he can to protect Ooh. and then obviously Kenji's like yeah that's not gonna go over so well for you <laughs> he's so mad so the men have just gotten home from the tavern and like I said, they were followed home by Kenji and Kenji is slowly getting the hang of the fact that, hey, I've got some powers here that people don't know about. And, um, you know, he's starting to get more comfortable with the fact that he's a vampire and like what his skills are. He's really angry and he's really sick of uh, Isaac's attitude and the way that he disrespected him. He is not the same Kenji that he was before he became a vampire. And he deals with things a lot differently now. He has no control over his anger, no control over his emotions, and he overreacts to everything. So any little push, shove, Kenji goes full-blown rager vampire, and he doesn't feel any guilt about it. He is just consumed by the strength that he has as a vampire so he has sucked the life out of Osbert and he has completely drained all life force from his body and Kenji's like you disrespect me I disrespect you and Kenji is taking care of Isaac's family you want to tell me how strong your family is and how strong your your village is then i'll just deal with it the only way i know how so isaac has seen what has happened and he becomes enraged and he's like what did you do to my family who are you what are you i don't understand like they're gone like how did you do that what did you do you're you're a monster and the brother has come william has come along and he has seen what happened what has happened and um, he's like devastated and he's like in shock of witnessing his parents death and Isaac is like enraged and furious and he's like you know what Kenji we're gonna go and so in order to try to protect his family Isaac has come along and he is trying to get into a fight with um, Kenji and of course Kenji is gonna win because he is an extremely strong vampire. Oh wow, yeah, Kenji just threw him to the ground. And Kenji is gonna say to him, he's, oh, look how strong he is. He's gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna make you suffer for longer than you will ever know. You will experience a pain and a lifetime of misery. And it'll have, te and it'll have taught you to have never messed with me. And he's gonna turn him into a vampire because he's gonna say if I have to suffer this miserable loneliness and put up with people like you and do the things I do I'm gonna turn you into the monster that you fear and the monster that you hate and so he's mesmerized him and he's forcing him to become a vampire um, Isaac's like what has happened to me 
Isaac has consumed the essence of a vampire and will turn in a few days time. And he's like, what did you do to me? And as you can see, he's got the marks on his neck, lost all of his energy. And in the process of him turning and like Kenji, his head beating and everything happening, Kenji has the opportunity to finish off the last family member of poor Isaac's family and Isaac can do nothing about it. He's just sitting there turning and witnessing the loss of his family in devastation. He is so scared and he doesn't know what to do. And apparently enjoying a hot dog while his brother is being compelled and, and the life force being taken from him also. <laughs> And unfortunately, the last of his family have passed. And Kenji is there just enjoying. He's like, man, what a hard day's work. My neck is hurting. And it's just really sad. And poor Isaac doesn't know what to do. And he's so angry. He's like, what did you do to me? What have you done to my family? And I, um, Kenji's like, listen, come find me when you're ready. And then maybe, you know, I'll explain everything to you. And in the process of all of this, his girlfriend shows up and Isaac's like, oh my God, not Lucia too. This cannot happen to her. She's like, what, what happened? What's going on? Is everything okay, Isaac? What, your family, who is this guy? And Kenji's gonna be, and he's decided, obviously this is someone Isaac cares about and he gave me a hard time. So I am now gonna do an enchanting introduction to his lady friend also. So there he is giving an enchanting, look he puts flowers all over her. Mesmerize Lucia and make her think that she does not care for um, Isaac at all. And Lucia's like, who's Isaac? So he has completely used his vampire um, abilities to wipe, oh, Death is on fire. <laughs> Careful, Death, we're gonna need you. Kenji is just beginning his life mission. He's getting stronger every single day, learning new things. He's learned long ago he can control people's memories, wipe their memories, and he is actually going to mesmerize Lucia and wipe all memories of Isaac from her mind so she won't even remember that she loved him in the first place. Isn't Kenji so evil? <laughs> So he is mesmerizing her and wiping her mind. She has no clue what is going on. And for some reason, she thinks that she's just got feelings for Kenji. So she's like, oh. <laughs> and poor Isaac, during this time, think has no clue what's happening. He's turning into a vampire. He has no control. He is furious from losing a fight and the love of his life doesn't even remember him anymore. He angered Kenji so much and Kenji is such a lost soul dealing with his own anger and grief. He has completely taken it out on this poor family and who knows how many more families um, he has done this to. Isaac is just one of many that have been hurt by Kenji. The only difference here is that Kenji was so enraged by Isaac thinking he could take him on and challenging him that he decided to hand him the same deal of fate that he was once ha handed, thinking, you know what? You really want to see what suffering is? You thought it was going to be bad? I'm going to make sure it's bad for you now. And it's really sad because I know that Kenji is not the type of guy that would normally do this. And this is his vampire, this monster, this creature inside of him taking over any part of human that was left in him. And he doesn't care. He has no pity, nothing. And he has completely ruined Isaac's life in a matter of one day. He goes from in love, a, a blacksmith apprentice, a family that's very loving, you know, a brother that was going to care for him for the rest of his life to, uh, you know, a woman that doesn't remember him. His entire family is gone uh, by the hands of Kenji and he is slowly turning into a vampire and he does not know what is happening to him and he sees what's happening to Lucia. Lucia has no clue what's going on. She is completely out of it. And Isaac is so weak and feeling so defeated. He's gonna say to Kenji, I don't know what you did to me. I don't know what is happening to me, but mark my words. As soon as I figure it out, 
and I master it, I am coming for you. I am coming for everything you love, everything you have, everything you have built for yourself. It will be taken from you and you will have to deal with me now for eternity. Now I am your curse to bear. And he's basically threatening Kenji with an inch of his life. So he's like, you better watch for me because I am going to become your worst nightmare. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed this episode and enjoyed getting to know Isaac a little bit better. If you did, please go ahead and give the video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and I would really appreciate it. And until next time, I am going to say bye for now.